Hello everyone. Happy Tuesday. Yes, it is Tuesday. It's time for another episode of Tuesday Live at Five. This is Lena Gersa. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Cambridge, Ontario, Canada. And today I am sharing a new stamp set from the upcoming January to April Mini. Now, this is my last live of 2022. It's been a crazy year, but a fantastic year. And I'm so excited to give you a sneak peek of some new products that are coming um, in just a, just a little over a week, really. Now, the other thing I need to tell you about is um, that when the mini goes live on January 5th, Celebration also goes live, which is our best promotion of the year. It means free product, and who doesn't love free? And there are some fantastic uh, freebies available during celebration this year. I'm going to be featuring one of them today. It is by far and away so far my favorite celebration freebie. So you'll see lots of that today. Uh, but we are all about the adorable best day stamp set. It is so cute. I had to have it because of course it has a chonky kitty um, in this as an image in the stamp set. And it reminds me so much of our Stella who is a little on the chubby side, uh, getting chubbier by the day because it's cold out and she doesn't want to go outside or get any exercise. So she is, uh, she's, she's putting on her winter weight. Let's put it that way. Um, and so she is the perfect uh, model for this stamp set. And uh, I had so much fun playing with it. So I'm going to stop chatting. I'm going to pull up my video here on my iPad so I can see who's joining me. I'm hoping Facebook cooperates today. Um, it's been having a little bit of a temper tantrum of late. Um, oh, hi, Joanne. Welcome. Hi, Laura. All right, I have a feeling lots of people have forgotten what day it is. I almost did myself. It feels like a Monday because my husband went back to work after being off for several days for the holidays. And uh, I'm, of course, off on winter break from school. So um, it took me a minute to realize that today is, in fact, Tuesday and that I'm expected to go live. So here I am. Um, and I have three cute projects to share. So I'm going to flip the camera and we're going to get to it, okay? Here we go. Let's just give this a tilt and see if we can get this lined up nice and straight. Okay, that looks pretty good. A little saggy. There we are. Okay, let's get to some stamping. So this stamp set, as I said, I had to have it because of this adorable chubby kitty image. I absolutely love it. Um, it is Stella to a T. Uh, a little bit more uh, marking than she has. She's got more white than, um, than markings, but she is the perfect model for this chubby little kitty. And uh, this kitty also works perfectly for my niece. She had a birthday on uh, December 17th. And um, this was not 17th. Yes, yeah, 17th. 17th? Yes. <laughs> My goodness, it's been a week already. Um, and she has a chubby kitty herself. So this was the perfect image to make her birthday card. So let me get to some stamping here. So our first project does not use the chubby kitty. It uses the fabulous birthday cake and lots and lots of the gorgeous Dandy Design Celebration Freebie DSP. Now this DSP is a level two item. It's a mega pack of DSP. So you get 48 sheets of fun, bright, um, beautiful patterns. We've got plaids, we've got stripes, we've got polka dots, um, just all sorts of fantastic background patterns for your projects in fun, bright colors. We all need a little bright these days, don't we? It certainly is dark. Um, so we are going to put together this card. I've done most of the coloring ahead of time, just so you don't have to sit and watch me color for hours on end. But I am going to give you a couple of tips for coloring this cake. So I have um, die cut the largest label from the seasonal labels dies um, out of basic white cardstock and then stamped my image in memento black. And to color, I use Daffodil Delight, uh, Polished Pink and Dark Pool Party, which is very close to Coastal Cabana, which is my background color here. So to color my letters, I wanted to get an ombre effect. So I basically just took my light Daffodil Delight and then came in with my dark and I'm just going to come sort of part way up with the dark just like that and then I'm going to come back with the light and I'm going to blend that out now I'm going to use my bullet tip just so I can get a little bit more a little bit more pressure there and get that to blend a little bit better and there we go super easy to get an ombre look with your blends and then for the banner i used a polished pink so i started again with my light and colored the entire banner with the light so i'm just going to kind of come all the way across 
Now the beautiful thing about using the Memento Black ink is it doesn't bleed or smear when you color on it with your blends, okay? So if you are using Stampin' Blends or any other alcohol-based marker, you need to use a solvent ink, which is our Memento Black, okay? Um, then I'm gonna come in with my dark and I'm just gonna add a little bit of shadow at the bend in the banner. So if you think about it, the banner is kind of tucking behind. So I'm adding just a bit of shadow on both sides and then I'm gonna come back with my light and I'm gonna blend that out. Now I'm not gonna come all the way across with my light again because I want the middle of my banner to be a little bit lighter just to give it a little bit of the look of, a, of dimension there. Okay, and there's my little banner. Easy peasy, right? Now, the rest of the cake, again, I used my Dark and Light Daffodil Delight for the top part, um, my Dark and Light um, Polished Pink, and then the Dark Pool Party. Okay, all right, let's put together the rest of our card here. So we have um, a piece of this fabulous Dandy Designs DSP. It's got the floral on the back and the stars on the front. Um, this is five and a quarter by four inches. And then I have another pattern from the same DSP. I use both of these patterns, these patterns in last week's live with my friendly gnomes. Um, but this time I am using it for a birthday card. So this one is, what is it? One and three quarters by five and a quarter. So we're gonna go ahead and glue that right across the middle of our DSP panel. Hi Joyce, welcome. You remembered it was Tuesday. <laughs> I have a feeling most people have no idea what day it is. Do you always find that? I always find like after Christmas, that sort of week between Christmas and New Year's are sort of like the netherworld. You're not really quite sure where you are or what you're supposed to be doing. At least that's me. I always find it a little bit disconcerting, discombobulating. It's a good thing I have my lives to keep me on track, right? All right, so now we're gonna take a piece of polished pink cardstock. Again, this is uh, five and a quarter, but it's one inch wide. And I'm gonna come in with a bit of polished pink ink and the fun confetti stamp from the stamp set. And I'm just gonna stamp some confetti all over this little polished pink strip here. And I'm not gonna worry too much about the middle part because my uh, label is going to cover it, but we'll just kind of stamp along here, just like that, okay? Just for a bit of texture, tone on tone. And then we're going to go ahead and glue that across the center of our um, DSP. So we're going to take a little bit of glue here and adhere that. So we'll get that centered right about there. And again, it's always helpful to use your grid paper to get make sure you're getting your pieces on straight. Okay, that doesn't look very straight. Let's adjust, there we go, that's better. Okay, now we're gonna add a little bit of this fun twine. So this is from a new combo pack. It comes in these three colors. So we've got Coastal Cabana, Garden Green, and Pumpkin Pie. Um, and it is, it's called Three Twine Combo Pack. So again, it's from the new mini. It's got Coastal Cabana, which we have not had Coastal Cabana twine in forever. So I was quite happy to see that. So I'm just gonna take and add a glue dot to the back side, right where the pink and the Coastal Cabana meet. Come on, glue dots, work with me. They don't wanna come off the roll today. Holy cow, they're really sticky. Sticky to the roll, that is. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and run this right across the bottom edge of our stamped polished pink strip. See if we can get this one to come off a little better. I gotta warm up my glue dots. It's cold in here and they're not uh, wanting to come off the roll very well today. There we go. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and glue this onto a polished pink card base. Uh, it's five and a half by eight and a half, scored in the middle at four and a quarter. So we're gonna just fold that in half along our score line and then add a little bit of adhesive to the back of our DSP panel. And we're just gonna pop that onto the front of our card base, just like that, okay? And then our 
uh, focal image is going to get popped up with some dimensionals. So again, we'll just add a few of these to the back of our label and get rid of our backings. And then we're going to pop this on a little bit to the left, not quite centered on our card front. Oh, that's a little bit low. Let's put that a bit higher. There we go. Okay, now I added a bit of bling to my letters, so I'm just taking my Wink of Stella and brushing it over the letters in Happy. And then I also blinged up my banner just to make it stand out a little bit. Okay, then we're gonna add a little bow with our twine. So it's just gonna be a single bow. This twine's a little bit chunkier than our regular baker's twine. Uh, which is just fine with me because it has a little bit more presence on the front of your card. You don't have to, you don't feel like you have to double your twine in order to have it kind of show up on the front of your card. So I'm just going to take a glue dot and I'm going to add it right where the label and twine meet there. And that's where I'm going to adhere my bow. Just like that. Okay. And then of course every birthday card needs a little bling. So we're going to add some of our Glossy dots, glossy dots, polish dots, polish dots, I think. They're from the annual. So I'm just going to add a couple of these. Three, to be exact. Three is not a couple. I do know that. <laughs> and there we go. Fun, fun, fun. Now on the inside of this one, I added a white panel, stamped some more confetti along the top, and then stamped another sentiment from the stamp set. So cute, fun, easy peasy birthday card. So that is number one, done and done. And let's go on to number two. So number two, I could not resist. I had to use this adorable kitty. <laughs> Look how cute he is. Oh, love him. Um, so this, I'm going to show you how to put this one together. Again, super simple. These images are so big and fun that you don't need a whole lot more to your card to um, complete it. So again, I'm using another pattern from the Dandy Designs DSP pack. Again, celebration freebie. It's a level two item. So free with a $120 order here in Canada. So I have started with a four by five and a quarter inch piece of the DSP. And then I took my stylish shapes dies and I took the two largest circles and I cut two of them out from the side of my DSP panel. And that's going to give me that sort of framed look around my image. Just a little bit different way to kind of highlight your focal image. Um, so I have a piece of Coastal Cabana cardstock. It's four and one eighth by five and three eighths inches. So we're going to go ahead and add a little bit of adhesive to the back of our DSP panel. And we're going to stick that down. We're going to have a very narrow little border all the way around. Maybe just a little bit, like 16th of an inch, teeny tiny border. I am going to shove this over just a smidge so that I have a little bit more evenness on the sides. There we go. Okay. And then our circle is going to kind of get centered inside the larger circle. And again, I want to make sure I maintain that little bit of a border along the right side. So we're going to go ahead and add this. Hi, Joyce. Welcome. Glad you could join us and you remembered it was Tuesday. <laughs> I think half the world forgot. Everybody thinks it's a Monday. It sure feels like a Monday. Um, my hubby went back to work after being off for, well, four days, including the weekend. So it sure feels like a Monday to me. All right, so there is my background panel. Now, before we do anything else, we're going to adhere that to our card base. Let me just get these bits out of, this, out of the way. So this is a thick, basic white cardstock. It's four and a quarter by 11 inches, scored in the middle at five and a half. So we'll fold that in half along the score line. And then we're going to go ahead and add a bit of adhesive to the back of our panel and adhere it to the front of our card base here. So there we go. Let's make sure that's centered. There we go. All right. Oh, you like that circle idea? Yeah, it's just a little different, right? Sometimes it's fun to play around with your dies and see what you can do to create a slightly different look. All right. Now, I have stamped my adorable little kitty in the memento black. And um, I'm going to show you how I colored it because 
it it's such a cute image you don't need to color the entire image you certainly could if you wanted to but it's not necessary so i'm going to start actually with the cupcake wrapper here i'm using light and dark uh balmy blue so i'm going to color the entire thing in the light to start okay so i'm just going to come in with my light and color the entire thing i'm not worrying about polka dots or anything i'm just coloring the whole thing in the light it makes this really quick and easy to color Okay, then I'm going to come in with my dark, and sorry, I'm losing my little balloons here. Um, I'm going to color the polka dots with the dark. So I'm just kind of going over the polka dots, and then I'm also very roughly kind of following the outline of the folds in the, cu in the cupcake wrapper. I'm not being super careful, because I don't want it to look perfect. I'm just kind of adding a little bit of shadow to that fold, just like that. Okay, then I'm gonna come back in with my light and I'm gonna blend that all out. So again, I'm gonna come right over everything with my light and blend it all out. Okay, really quick and easy way to color that little cupcake wrapper there. Okay, not fussy at all. All right, we're also going to color the stripe and the hat in the light balmy blue. So we'll do that while we have it out. And, oh, I forgot to, I've got to color my little pom-pom too. There we go. Those are all in the light balmy blue. All right, then um, for my bow tie and my balloon, I'm going to use my dark pool party. Again, dark pool party is very close to Coastal Coloring his little bow tie. I'm coloring the rest of the hat. And I'm coloring the balloon. So for the balloon, I'm going to color the whole thing. Okay, and then I'm going to kind of darken the side that has the shading on it. So I'm just going to add a little extra and that will blend out and give it a little bit of dimension. Okay, easy peasy. Now to color my, my kitty, I'm just simply going to use my light smoky slate. And I'm just going to kind of follow the stripes and just add shadow sort of along his chubby little edges. Okay, on the ears, I'm doing the whole ear. So I'm kind of dabbing. I'm not like really using strokes just because I want it to, I don't want it to look like I've drawn a line. You know what I mean? I want it to look a little bit more shadowy. There we go. Okay, and then I'm going to color the whole tail. There we go. Isn't he cute? So cute. And I just realized I forgot to bring my, um, let me grab my light petal pink for the nose. So let's add a little bit of light petal pink on the nose and a little bit sort of in the insides of the ears there. Just a little hint of pink. And there's our cute little tonky kitty cat. All right, so he's going to get centered in our little die cut circle there, but we're going to pop him up. Hi, Cheryl. Oh, <laughs> Joanne, I'm sorry to freak you out. That's just a habit that I've developed, and I know it stresses some people out, and I will confess I have on occasion um, accidentally glued it upside down. It does happen, so I'm sorry to stress you out, but <laughs> I just find it easier to line, to get my edges even. I don't know what it is. Um, I'm just a little odd that way, but that's just something that I started doing years ago and I've been doing ever since. All right, so we're gonna get rid of our backings here and adhere our chubby little kitty. So he's gonna go right about there, okay? And then I have here a die cut white banner. It's die cut using the stylus shapes dies. And I'm going to stamp my happy birthday sentiment in the memento black. So we'll just ink up our stamp here and we're going to hope, you know what, I'm going to do a practice run because just because I don't really trust myself. Oh, that's actually pretty straight. All right. Let's see if we can replicate that. <laughs> we shall see. Oh, that's not bad. Not bad at all. All right. 
Okay, we are going to add some little balloons. So I basically just took and stamped some extra little balloons and um, shaded them the same way that I did on my um, kitty. And we're gonna go ahead and add a little bit of adhesive to the back of our banner here. And we're gonna add one and two little balloons. Okay, and then my last balloon is going to get adhered to the front. But first we're gonna go ahead and pop this up. So I'm gonna add a couple of dimensionals to the back and then put a little bit of tape over top where it's going to um, overlap my kitty. And then I'm also going to put a mini dimensional on each balloon so that they don't get caught or tear. Okay, so we'll just get rid of our backings there. And we're gonna pop that on right about there. Just like that. And then our last little balloon is gonna go on with a glue dot. So we'll just take and press that onto a glue dot and stick that right on the end of our banner. Just going to trim this a little bit so it's a bit tidier. There we go. Isn't that cute? Love them. All right. Now let's add some bling. So these are the new pastel adhesive backed sequins. This is a huge pack of sequins. Uh, you get two sheets, a full sheet of large and a full sheet of small. Now I have used a ton of these, as you can see. Um, they have kind of become my go-to embellishment because they work with so many of the patterns and papers that are in the new mini. So I have used them a ton because they just work so well with everything. So there we go. I'm going to have to keep these out because I'm going to use them on my next card too. <laughs> all right. Now on the inside of this one, I stamped wishing you all the wishes and added another little strip. Actually, I've got an extra strip. So let's glue that in right now. Um, so these are just the little leftover scraps when you cut your card fronts from DSP. Um, so you end up with an inch and a half left. If you take your, your um, 12 by 12 DSP and you cut a 4 by 12 inch piece to cut your two panels, um, you'll be left with an inch and a half strip. And then I cut each of those strips in half to three quarters and that gives me a little, little something to add to the inside of my card just to decorate it a little bit. Okay. Now again, we're going to add a little bit of Wink of Stella to our balloons. Of course, we need Wink of Stella on a card that could be Stella, right? Yes. For those of you who don't know, Stella is our chunky kitty <laughs> who steals the show most of the time. So there we go. Cute, cute, cute. Love them. All right. So then on my last card, I decided I couldn't decide whether to use the cake or the kitty. So I decided to use both. <laughs> So I combined the images and made a fun shaker card. So I'm going to show you how to do this one. Again, more of that fabulous Dandy Designs DSP. I'm telling you, it needs to go at the top of your wish list when celebration starts because it is fabulous. Fabulous. All right. Yeah, it is really fun, eh? Yeah, Arlene, I had to get this one because our Stella, this is Stella. Like, seriously, she is our chubby, chubby kitty. So it was a must have for me. All right. So I'm not sure how many of you have done shaker cards before. I, I've heard a lot of people say they're intimidating. They really shouldn't be. They are far easier than they look. So I'm going to show you how to put this one together. So to start, um, this started as a piece of four by five and a quarter inch Daily Designs DSP. So it, I actually used um, both sides. Okay, so this is the front and then this is the back. Okay, so they're going to layer like that, but we're going to focus on this piece first. So I cut it to size and then I ran it through with the picture this dies to cut out my rectangles. Okay, then I stamped and fussy cut the kitty and my happy birthday cake. So you can see I just cut off the happy birthday from the cake. Okay, so what's going to happen is our cake is going to get here adhered down here. And then our kitty is going to look like he's popping out of the cake. And then we're going to add our happy birthday here. Simple, right? Right. So I'm going to start by adding just a little smidge of adhesive along the top of my cake here. Come on, glue, work with me. There we go. It's a little smidge. And we're going to tuck it in underneath. But we want it. To, we want to make sure it's not so high that it looks like our cake is floating. We want it to be grounded in that little window. Okay, so it's going to go right about there. I'm going to add a little smidge of glue just in the on the corner here to make sure that that stays put. Okay, and then we're going to add our chubby kitty. 
So we're going to go ahead and add a little bit of glue there. I'm gonna put a teeny bit on the balloon and a teeny bit on the hat because they're gonna overlap the DSP at the top. So we're just gonna tuck this in until you can't see the cupcake wrapper. You kinda of wanna center him over the um, cake. So he looks like he's popping out of the cake. All right, there he is. And then finally, we're going to add our happy birthday. So again, we're gonna add a little bit of adhesive along this bottom edge and just a little smidge to my H here. So again, we're gonna tuck this in and stick her down just like that, okay? So that is really all there is to it. Now I should mention to color my images, I use dark and light petal pink and dark and light fresh freesia with a little bit of light Highland Heather for some of the shading, okay? Um, so nothing fancy, just straight up coloring with a little bit of shading on the letters and um, the banner, okay? Um, the dark petal pink works quite well for a ginger cat, so I thought that would work well for this, this little kitty. So that's my... Um, my card front. Now I have a piece of window sheet. It is cut to four by five and a quarter inches as well. So it is going to layer behind my um, images here. Okay. And that's going to form, help to form my shaker. So I'm going to flip this over. I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of liquid glue. I like to use liquid glue to glue my adhesive sheets on. I get a lot of people asking, oh, will it stick to the, to, you know, will the uh, liquid glue work? It will. It takes a little bit longer to set because of course the window sheets are non-porous, but the advantage of using the liquid glue is that you get that wiggle time to make sure you get your window sheet exactly centered. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and add our window sheet. And just make sure again that you're not seeing it. Now it's gonna be hard for you to see that on the camera. I can barely see it here. Uh, but we just wanna make sure that we're not seeing any of that window sheet peeking out from behind the DSP. So we're just gonna make sure that that is centered. And then I just kind of like to give it a little tap just to spread my glue, okay? And that will set up and that will be really secure. It's not going, that is not gonna come off, okay? The liquid glue is very strong. All right, so now we are going to apply our adhesive strips to form our shaker. So our foam adhesive strips are in the annual catalog. You get two sheets like this and they last you forever. Um, depends on how many um, shaker cards you are making, but I, I don't use, I, I make them fairly often um, and you don't use a lot, okay? So um, a, one pack will last you quite a while. So I'm going to now, if you look here, do you see how my sequins stay contained in each little rectangle, okay? That's so that when the card is standing up, it doesn't all fall to the bottom. So we're actually going to outline each little rectangle to make sure that um, our, our filling for each part of the shaker stays in that part of the shaker. So I'm gonna start by running a strip along the bottom. Now, this is the really important part about um, using these strips. When you are um, adjoining them, you wanna make sure that it is but right up against, okay? You don't wanna have any gap. Um, if you have a gap, you run the risk of losing the filling from your shaker, okay? You don't want all your little bits to start falling out. So again, I'm gonna come right across here. and trim that. Now see, that's gonna to be too short if I put that in there. So I'm actually just gonna put this out near the edge. That's just gonna to help to adhere the shaker to the background. And I'm gonna use another little bit. So I've got this little bit of scrap here. So again, we just wanna make sure that those ends butt right up against each other. Okay, just see how they're right touching. You don't wanna have any gap, okay? All right, so then we're gonna come in here and do our second window. And again, this little scrap we'll save for later. Grab another strip and we're gonna come right across here. Again, you wanna make sure that those edges are touching. So this is the only part that you really need to be careful on to make sure that you are, um, now you see how that's gonna leave a gap? So I'm just gonna bend this inwards. Okay, and that's gonna avoid anything falling out. Um, you wanna make sure that there's no room for anything to fall out, okay? Um, the first time I made a shaker card, I was not so careful about that. <laughs> and all my filling fell out. It was rather disheartening. So I'm hoping to save you a little bit of grief um, by reminding you to make sure that those ends butt up against each other. All right, I'm gonna use a little bit of the edge here for this last bit. 
So we'll just run this across here like that. I'm not even going to worry. Oh, it's going to go off a little too close to the edge. So we'll just peel that back a bit so it's not visible. And there we go. All right. Now we get to add our filling. So these are um, they're from the annual. Can't remember the name of them. You get three different colors. There's the um, pink, the green, and blue. And they have all sorts of little things. So there's like little pearls, and there's gold, and white. And these pearls are all stuck together. So I'm going to break them apart because we don't want a big chunk in our shaker. So I'm just going to break these apart so that they are all loose. And I've used this color a lot. You can see I don't have much left in here. Um, but I'm going to put a little scoop in each window. And I love that there's like, there's all sorts of little um, shapes and colors in here. And it just makes it more interesting, right, than having a single um, color or a single shape in your shaker. So I'm just going to kind of shake these so that they're flat. And then we are going to, I'm just going to explain before we do it, we're going to adhere this piece. It's cut one eighth of an inch smaller than my um, front piece so that I can seal my shaker. Okay, so it's just a matter of taking off all my backings. Yeah, shaker cards are so much fun, Cheryl, and there's so many ways you can do them. I mean, the foam adhesive strips make it really, really easy to do it this way. Um, I'm actually um, posting a reel later this week on my Instagram that you'll want to check out that is another way to do a shaker card um, that doesn't require the adhesive strips. So you'll want to check that one out. I will show it to you at the end of this video so you can see what I'm talking about. But I will show you how to do that in my reel on Thursday. All right, so there we go. So we are going to now I want to make sure that I see the I'm going to see the daisies through my window. So I'm putting it this way up. And again, I want to make sure and this is really hard to do while I'm seated. But I want to make sure that that's going to seal all of my little openings. So I just kind of burnish it a little bit. And there we go. It's not easy. Like, it's way easier than they look. These things are gold when it comes to making shaker cards. All right. Okay, so we are going to go ahead and glue that onto our card front. This is a fresh Freesia cards card front. It's four and a quarter by 11 inches, scored in the middle at five and a half. So we're going to fold that in half along our score line. Hi, Tracy. Welcome. Glad you made it. It is, uh, it's the week between Christmas and New Year's. And nobody knows what day it is. <laughs> I barely knew what day it was. So we're going to go ahead, actually, to be honest, the only reason I knew what day it was is because I had a reminder in my phone because I was participating in an Instagram hop today. So I actually had my reminder go off and it made me look at the calendar <laughs> and I went, oh yeah, it's Tuesday. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, I totally get it. If you are not sure what day it is. So we're going to, I use liquid glue because again, when it, when you have a popped up card front, I find sometimes it's hard to get it centered and straight. So by using the liquid glue, it just gives you that extra little bit of time to, uh, to maneuver it into place. Okay. Then I'm going to bring back some of these pastel, um, sequins, but I'm going to use the gold ones this time just to add a little bit of bling to the outside of my shaker. And again, you can use any of these, really any of the colors will work. The blue, maybe not so much, but the pink certainly would work. Uh, but I went with the gold just to bring out some of the gold in the shaker filling. Okay. And then on the inside, I'll just show you real quick what I did. Um, I added another strip of the DSP and I stamped some of the sparkler images from the stamp set and another sentiment. I stamped them all in basic gray. I should mention all of my images on this one are stamped in basic gray rather than the memento black, just because I wanted it to be a little bit softer. Okay. So there you go, three cute birthday cards using new celebration freebies and a brand new stamp set. And then I'll show you a couple other ideas. This is one that I did for the Instagram hop I participated in today. So I thought there's the confetti and the sparklers in the stamp set just totally said New Year's to me. So I turned my happy birthday cake into a happy New Year's cake. Um, this sentiment is from the Frosted Flurry stamp set. Um, stamped it in gold and heat embossed it. And then I actually heat embossed in gold on the brush gold metallic cardstock with the sparklers just for some fun. 
So there's that one. And then here is another take on a shaker card. So this is a reel that I'm going to be record or posting on Thursday. Um, so this does not use the adhesive sheets and it does not use window sheets. It's actually one of our clear envelopes to create a shaker. So you can see this is the difference. So this is when all of your shaker material collects at the bottom as opposed to dividing it up so that it kind of stays in each window. So just a different look. Um, but this is again, same set of sequins. This is the green that um, comes in the same pack. Okay. All right, everybody. Thanks for joining me today on a Tuesday between Christmas and New Year's. Thank you for joining me all year. It has been an amazing year. Um, I thank you for your loyalty. We're tuning in every Tuesday and for just your friendship as we chat and craft together. I so appreciate you. I hope you have a wonderful new year. I wish you the very best in 2023 and I can't wait to stand more with you in the new year. So I will see you now. I should mention uh, we, as we are counting down to the new catalog and to celebration, I am going to be counting down um, starting on New Year's Day. So every day from January 1st through 4th, I will be live at 7 p.m. with um, some celebration. Um, I'm going to feature a different celebration freebie on each day. So you're going to want to make sure you're tuning in. You're also going to want to make sure you're checking my Instagram because I will be posting um, several samples each day for some inspiration and fun using some new celebration freebies. And then on Thursday, January 5th at 7 p.m., I will be hosting my live launch party for the new mini and celebration. So you'll want to make sure you tune in for that. All right. I should mention as well that I will not be live on Tuesday at 5. I will be live on Tuesday at 7 next week. Okay. As I count down to celebration. All right, everybody. Thanks so much. Have a wonderful evening and I will see you next year. Bye for now.